I am Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor, and this is a quick video on herbs. I'm going to talk about two categories of herbs. One is a tonic, and the other one is an adaptogen. Now, there's more classifications of herbs beyond this, but a tonic is an herb that gives you energy. And uh, an example of that would be ginseng. And an adaptogen is an herb that conserves the energy that you already have. So you're able to deal with stress better, whether it's emotional stress or physical stress. Or let's say you're recovering from the cold or flu. So an adaptogen helps you recover from that. So now a lot of herbs are actually a combination of the two. So it could be like a 40% tonic and a 60% adaptogen. So with Ania, Eleuthero, these are, these are herbs that uh, are tonics and adaptogens together. Now, I'm going to talk about primary metabolites and secondary metabolites. Just think of the word metabolite as meaning nutrient or just some sort of plant chemical. So a primary metabolite would be the fat or oil that comes in it, like maybe evening primrose oil or flaxseed oil. So you got oils, you got chlorophyll, you got carbohydrates, and there's going to be some proteins in plants. These are essential for the plant to live. They're just they're the they're the body, if you will, of the plant. The secondary metabolites, these are uh, chemicals that the plant uses to survive better. So an example would be. Um, a chemical that a plant releases that defends itself from an insect or prevents a mold from growing on it. So this is what makes pl uh, plants or herbs uh, special because you, our bodies end up using this in its own way for its own health. And um, over the course of eons, millennia, we actually become dependent on these because we've been eating these plants for as long as we've been on the planet. So there you go, there's primary metabolites and secondary metabolites. And when you buy an herb at a store, this is what you're primarily, you're, you're getting as the secondary metabolites. Those are the active ingredients that your body uses to do something cool with it. All right, now the dose of herbs, it's um, not well known and definitely not well applied in the United States, but the dose is two to eight grams per day. That's a high dose compared to what you see at health food stores. Usually you'll see a teeny tiny bottle, like two ounce bottle of an herb. Well, that bottle really should be much, much bigger because you're going to do a whole swig of it, not just a few drops or an eyedropper full. You can do maybe two swigs of it. And when you buy a tablet or a capsule, when you buy it from a store, usually it's 100 milligrams or let's say 400 milligrams when actually it should be 2,000 milligrams, that's the very beginning. Two grams is 2,000 milligrams. So I've had people bring in a particular herb and uh, when I read the label, it'll say 100 milligrams and I'll say you need to take at least 20 a day and yet there's only 60 in the bottle. So they finished the bottle in three days and they just spent $35 on this herb and it's just not potent enough. It's just not enough of a dose. So, yeah, we've had, you know, we have a, a supplement, it's bilberry for the eyes, and it's six grams per tablet. So it's a really powerful, really concentrated tablet. So there you go, there's a little primer on herbs, and uh, feel free to use them as much as you possibly can.